Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Um, indeed, I work at the European Commission at DG Environment and there I'm responsible for the European Innovation Partnership on Water. Um, so I'll try to briefly describe what that uh, initiative uh, entails. And at the same time, I've also been asked to give a short overview of some of the European Union financial instruments that we have available that can be of interest to, uh, to SMEs in particular. Um, first of all, I, I would really like to thank uh, Novago for the, for the invitation for me to come here. Um, I think it's a really excellent opportunity to, to have some direct contact, especially with small and medium enterprises, because the, I think the gap between people working in the field, SMEs, and the EU is, is, is very big. And uh, uh, we all know that SMEs are actually the driver of, of a lot of the innovation, but for us it's very difficult to actually get in touch with them and, uh, and discuss with them and see what their needs are. So um, I'm very happy to be, to be able to be here, and I'd be more than happy to get questions or suggestions or ideas from you uh, directly after this or, or during the cocktail after the, um, after the, um, the the conference. Um, I will first start with going, no this is not correct, sorry. I will try to go into some of the ideas of the, um, the EIP on water first, um, just as the, as the basics. What we try to, to do with the innovation partnership on water is to drive innovation in the area of water, so that's not very surprising. So what we try to do is to make sure that those organizations, be it small or large, who are trying to innovate can, be, uh, can do that. We hope to facilitate that. But at the same time, what we also try to do is to make sure that we can create the market opportunities for that. And just in the, the previous introduction, this was already uh, mentioned a couple of times. There's a lot of opportunity <clears throat> in this region, but also you have to look outside of your own region to see what kind of opportunities there are throughout Europe, but also, of course, outside of uh, Europe. So market opportunities, try to facilitate that is a key uh, element of the EIP on water. And third of all, um, what we also try to do is through innovation to support the implementation of our European water policy. We have a, a quite uh, large number of uh, European directives, the water framework directive uh, being the most important one to try to make sure that our European waters are in, in, in good, uh, of good quality. Um, we see that member states are really struggling with the implementation of, uh, of this policy and we think that innovation surely should be a part to help um, uh, member states to implement this. And of course, a lot of technology or innovation in terms of management is, is really important in this. So th this is broadly what the innovation partnership is, uh, is trying to, uh, to do. Very briefly, we have set up an agenda in, in coordination, or actually the agenda was set up by stakeholders, and the stakeholders have been varying uh, very much. It's not just purely the water sector, but we've tried to include all the sectors that we think are relevant for water innovation, such as the financial sector, ICT sector, agricultural sector, chemical sector, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everybody who we think can have a stake in water and innovation, we've invited them around the table, and they have jointly developed an agenda with priority areas. Well, uh, I will leave the, the slides here so you can take, uh, take a look at them uh, quietly, but we have uh, eight priority areas, of which five are thematic and three uh, cross-cutting, and this is basically the agenda of the EIP on water in the coming years. What we work around uh, mainly are uh, what we call EIP action groups, and um, Perhaps what I should start by saying with the, the entire innovation partnership on water is that it is not a financial instrument. So we do not have any funding directly linked to the EIP in water. So if you're interested in the EIP because you think you can get direct money out of that, I'm very sorry, but that's not what we offer. We offer a lot of other things though, which I hope will make it uh, just as interesting. Um, very briefly about these um, action groups that is the, the, the heart, I would say, of the innovation partnership on water. What we try to do uh, with action groups is that they are formed by stakeholders themselves, and what we ask is that they have a multidisciplinary uh, composition. So we ask that they have the different sectors involved, but that they are focusing on one of these priority areas that we've developed to say, this is a problem that we see, we want to try to develop an innovative solution to this problem linked to our priority areas, and then we bring together the different kind of stakeholders that are necessary. So again, for example, the financial sector or the ICT sector, or if it's related to agriculture, the agricultural sector, etc., etc. Um, hopefully also an international setting. 
so to have members from uh, different countries. And again, unfortunately, we do not provide any money. But what we do provide is that these action groups that they create, uh, we try to create as much as possible visibility for what they do. We try to create, to promote what they are doing. We try to uh, offer them a network. We try to offer them, for example, from the European Commission, if they run into problems with legislation, that we can help them to see what are the margins within the framework of the legislation that you can work with to make sure that you can go ahead when you encounter some of the, the barriers. So all these kind of things that we try to do is to make sure that groups that uh, would otherwise perhaps not work together are being brought together to work towards a common challenge that they see and to help them to find the opportunities and to work towards uh, solutions and innovations. Another thing that we offer, and this is to anybody, is um, it's a marketplace. We have opened an online marketplace where anybody who is involved in the area of water and innovation can register, can connect to other actors throughout Europe or even worldwide. We put information on there and again also there we create the visibility for these action groups that have been selected. Uh, we select these action groups through calls, there are open calls for uh, commitment, uh, again no funding but uh, we try to bring together these, these different kind of people and what they're working on they get to showcase what they are doing on our marketplace and um, it's, it's open. What we try to do also is to encourage these action groups to invite new members if they, if, if you as an organization say well this is an action group that I'm interested in, you can get directly in touch with them and we encourage these groups to bring in new partners to, to further expand their, uh, their activities. One of the other things that we try to do uh, to also to create the visibility but also just to, to drive the idea of innovation in the area of water is to organize our annual conference. We do this uh, this year on the 5th of November in the city of Barcelona and also there we try to engage the different action groups to participate in the different sessions but also to have them in a say exhibition area where they can showcase the kind of work that they're doing and hopefully attract attention and create um, uh, say a market demand for that. What we also do, I mentioned before that we try to um, support uh, the policy implementation through innovation is to link these action groups with national governments who are responsible for policy implementation because we know where all the gaps and the challenges are in implementation and we know which action groups are working on particular solutions and we try to bring that together so again to create a demand for the innovations that people are working on. I mentioned that there's no direct funding involved in the EIP, but it doesn't mean that there are no financial opportunities at all. Um, there are some, but they are indirect. What we've done is to make the links between the agenda of the EIP on water, so that slide with the different priority areas, and the available financial instruments that we have at the European level. We have done this with the seventh framework program. This is now finalized, but last year um, under the, the 2013 work program, we have funded 11 projects, a total worth of 50 million euros for demonstration projects related to the priority areas of the innovation partnership on water. And we've continued that under Horizon 2020. In one of the, the, the challenges, one of the, the, the pillars of uh, Horizon 2020, there is a specific focus area on water innovation. And this year we are spending 39 million euros on market replication projects. The call for that has been closed already. But next year we will uh, open a new call for demonstration projects worth of uh, 45 million euros. So we try to stimulate again the public spending at the European level towards demonstration towards real innovation projects uh, and links to the agenda of the innovation partnership on water. Furthermore, we're trying to make links with, for example, the structural and cohesion funds, or I should actually now say the European um, structural and investment funds. This is money, this is really where a lot of money is available, but this is spent at the national level. So this is often linked to challenges such as water, environment, etc., etc. This has been jointly um, agreed on by each member state and the European Commission, but then the member state itself is spending this kind of money. And there are a lot of opportunities also for small and medium enterprises to participate in how that money is being spent. But this is something where you have to find your contact points in your own member state to see how you can participate in that. 
at the European level, from DG Environment, we have a small fund, it's the Life Fund. Also there we have made the link with the agenda of the EIP on water. Again, the same priority areas and small um, amounts uh, of money are available there uh, for innovative uh, projects. And then the last thing I would like to mention is we're working closely together with the European uh, Investment Bank, who is part of the structure of the EIP, and there we're looking into um, perhaps a water technology fund or, or a new financial instrument that can be set up by the European Investment Bank, again, directly related to the, um, to the EIP on water. But this is still in the stages of uh, discussions between uh, the Commission and the European Investment Bank. One thing that we've done from the EIP on water itself, and I think that uh, Mina has already uh, sent this out in an email to, to all the participants here today, is that we have created a, um, a funding guide for all the relevant funds that are available, where you can easily see for which kind of organizations it's available, what kind of projects are being funded, find the access information for, for, um, for further uh, contacts and, and information, etc. So it gives a very clear overview for actors in the area of water and innovation to see what kind of uh, funds uh, they could uh, look at. This includes, for example, uh, Aquo, which is, is uh, a European um, uh, organization that is, is trying to channel national funding into European uh, projects. But I would uh, advise you to have a look at that and, uh, and to see where there are perhaps opportunities for yourselves. Now, I'll, uh, the second part, um, I'll go into uh, briefly into some of the, um, the uh, say, non-EIP water-related uh, funding uh, opportunities. And there, at the moment, uh, there are basically two blocks of um, uh, areas of interest, I would say, for small and medium enterprises when it comes to funding. In the first place, there's the COSME uh, program. Um, and this is um, the, the program for competitiveness and entrepreneurship or enterprises uh, and small and medium enterprises. Um, and this is, it has funding, um, but it's mainly trying to create the, uh, the framework for small and medium enterprises to better um, function and to be able to allow them to, to do their business. Um, one of the things it does, where quite some funding goes into, is better access to finance for SMEs. This is money that is not so much going through calls to fund SMEs directly, but it's uh, to support financial institutions in the different member states, for example, to create um, um, risk sharing facilities, to make sure that national financial institutions are in a better position to provide loans to small and medium enterprises. Uh, another thing that the COSME program is doing is to try to increase the possibility for SMEs to access new markets. For example, to look into, to provide information to SMEs on how they can access markets in China, or in South America, or in, in other places in the world. Um, they do uh, have a program on supporting entrepreneurs. So this is much more on how uh, to give courses to, um, to work together with entrepreneurs so they really get a better idea on how they can conduct their business, what kind of opportunities they can find, um, th these kind of things, really to support entrepreneurs. And mainly this is being done through a system which is called the European Enterprise Network, which, has, uh, which, is really have, um, which objective is to support small and medium enterprises in Europe to do their business. And they have local contact points in every member state and in most of the regions. And their work is very much, I think, similar to what uh, Novago is, is, uh, is doing here in, uh, in Finland. It's trying to help create uh, understanding for SMEs, how they can conduct their business, support them, and, and uh, look at the, at the opportunities and create networks to, uh, to do business. The last thing I'd like to say about COSME is that uh, it's also looking inward towards the Commission about how can we create better uh, opportunities, what are the barriers to innovation for SMEs and how can we take away such barriers. This is actually also something that we're doing within the Innovation Partnership on Water directly. Look at where are barriers to innovation when it comes to water, for example, when it comes to finance, when it comes to demonstration projects, when it comes to legislation, when it comes to um, finding your way around um, to, to find partners and to take, take away such barriers and uh, make it easier for small and medium enterprises to, uh, to conduct their business. 
I've put um, direct links to all of this uh, here, so I think it may be uh, better for you to, to have a look at that. All the information is on the websites of the European Commission, so I would advise you to, uh, to have a look. There are some calls available. I've also put that, uh, the, the link to the portal for the calls uh, there, so you can find all the information available there. Lastly, where the, the bulk of the money um, is, uh, is Horizon 2020. And for those of you who are a bit aware of EU funding, um, you may be familiar with the uh, framework programs that we've had. Uh, last year we finalized the seventh framework program, and now we've moved into what we call Horizon 2020, which you could also call the, the eighth framework program. And Horizon 2020 really does mark a shift with the previous framework programs because the previous programs were very much focused on basic research, funding basic research. Now, however, Horizon 2020 is much more looking into innovation and I think it makes it much more interesting, especially for, for industries and, uh, and for SMEs and it creates much more opportunities there because it really tries to, to bring together the different elements um, to, to work through innovation. So research, entrepreneurs, public sector, and really try to get these different disciplinaries, uh, disciplines together to work and to, to drive to innovation. There are different opportunities for, for SMEs within Horizon 2020. Well, I see the, the letters have become very small here, but um, Horizon 2020 is built up out of three pillars. The first I haven't mentioned because it's not really relevant here, it's excellent science, but that's not really for the, the SME sector uh, relevant. Then there's a, a sector called industrial leadership um, pillar. And um, there is some, there are some uh, facilities provided, for example, a help desk on international, uh, intellectual property rights, which is just available for any SME. <clears throat> if you have qu uh, questions about how to deal with intellectual property rights, you can go there and get a lot of detailed information on how to, to deal with this if you're working on particular projects or developing something. <clears throat> then there's um, some money in uh, the leadership and enabling and industrial technologies. There are some calls there, but I must say I'm not really uh, well uh, familiar with that. So, again, the, the links are below there. I would uh, advise you to have a look at that to see what kind of real opportunities there could be for you. Then the more important thing is what I've already mentioned, the societal challenges pillar. This is what I mentioned before about um, the, the water innovation focus area, where we've made a direct link to the innovation partnership on water. This is where that 39 million euros on um, market replication and the current uh, call that is going to open, I think I've put the date somewhere, on the 12th, 12th of, December, of December, we're going to open a new call <coughs> for this 45 million euros for demonstration projects and there really are opportunities for SMEs to become part of uh, the consortia that can apply for the funding uh, under there. Um, Really, this is where I would suggest you to have a good look and see what kind of, um, also in the EIP water marketplace we're trying to create to facilitate people who are interested in, in doing this um, to, to look into and to find partners to build a consortia. So I would really uh, advise you to look at, have a good look at this call to, to look at this. I want to make you aware that after this year, so sorry, after 2015, we're going to start a new work program for 2016 and 17, where water innovation itself will not be a focus area anymore, but we're going to shift towards an even more, say, a wider heading of um, three areas, which are um, climate change services, nature-based solutions, and systemic eco-innovation. Again, significant funding will go in there, and it will probably provide a lot of uh, opportunities for SMEs in the water area. Uh, the information about this is it's still being developed, so it will come out in the course of uh, next year. But this is really something where I would very much uh, keep my eye on to see what the opportunities are there for you. A last thing um, within the minute that I still have um, that is, I think is very important is the SME instrument. Um, and this is a specific instrument and that has never been, uh, we've never had that at the European level before. It is purely targeted at uh, disruptive uh, SMEs and you do not need to be part of a consortium to apply for this. This is really, you can as a single SME apply for EU funding and the program works in, in three different phases. So you can get, um, one thing I should say before, there are 13 different areas uh, in which the money available in this instrument is being spent. Water as such is not one of them. But, um, 
well, I, sorry, I don't have them in the top of my head, but for example, uh, Blue and um, Blue Innovation, I think, is one. But anyway, the link is there. Have a good look. There are certainly headings that are very relevant for your activities. And under these headings, you can, in the first phase, apply to have um, to develop your concept. So you can get up to uh, 50,000 euros to develop your business case. If this is approved, and that's say um, there's an opening to fund say 40 business cases in one particular area and then a smaller number of them which are the best can go to the next phase where they can get from 500,000 to two and a half million euros to uh, to work on a demonstration site and then after that there's no more funding but there's all the support to further develop and build up your own um, to do your market replication and to to work on this so this is really a very direct targeted instrument for SMEs where you as a single SME have the opportunity to get funding to and develop your business case develop your uh, demonstration sites and then of course further uh, build out uh, into it that was a lot of information in a very short time so I apologize <laughs> for going through this uh, so quickly um, but I think these were at least relevant things that you should be aware of. Um, as I said, the slides are available. Um, have a look at the links because everything that I've said is all available on the internet. So take your time and uh, if you have questions now, I'm happy to take them. Also afterwards, feel free uh, to send me an email or to, to get in touch with me if you want more detailed information, in particular about the EAP on water because that's where I know a little bit more about. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Robert. Thank <clears throat> you.